preface. Software engineering has this in common with having children. The labor before the birth is painful and difficult, but the labor after the birth is where you actually spend most of your effort. Yet software engineering as a discipline spends much more time talking about the first period as opposed to the second, despite estimates that 40 to 90% of the total costs of systems are incurred after birth. The popular industry model that conceives of deployed operational software as being stabilized in production and therefore needing much less attention from software engineers is wrong. Through this lens, then, we see that if software engineering tends to focus on designing and building software systems, there must be another discipline that focuses on the whole life cycle of software objects, from inception through deployment and operation, refinement, and eventually peaceful decommissioning. This discipline uses and needs to use a wide range of skills, but has separate concerns from other kinds of engineers. Today, our answer is the discipline Google calls Site Reliability Engineering. So what exactly is Site Reliability Engineering, SRE? We admit that it's not a particularly clear name for what we do. Pretty much every Site Reliability Engineer at Google gets asked what exactly that is and what they actually do on a regular basis. Unpacking the term a little, first and foremost, SREs are engineers. We apply the principles of computer science and engineering to the design and development of computing systems, generally large distributed ones. Sometimes our tasks is writing the software for those systems alongside our product development counterparts. Sometimes our task is building all the additional pieces those systems need, like backups or load balancing, ideally so they can be reused across systems. And sometimes our task is figuring out how to apply existing solutions to new problems. Next, we focus on system reliability. Ben Trainer Sloss, Google's VP for 24-7 Operations, originator of the term SRE, claims that reliability is the most fundamental feature of any product. A system isn't very useful if nobody can use it. Because reliability is so critical, SREs are focused on finding ways to improve the design and operation of systems to make them more scalable, more reliable, and more efficient. However, we expend effort in this direction only up to a point. When systems aren't reliable enough, we instead invest our efforts in adding features or building new products. Finally, SREs are focused on operating services built atop our distributed computing systems. Whether those services are planet-scale storage, email for hundreds of millions of users, or where Google began, web search. The site in our name originally referred to SRE's role in keeping the Google.com website running, though we now run many more services, many of which aren't themselves websites, from internal infrastructure such as Bigtable to products for external developers such as the Google Cloud Platform. Although we have represented SRE as a broad discipline, it is no surprise that it arose in a fast-moving world of web services and perhaps in origin owes something to the particularities of our infrastructure. It is equally no surprise that all of the post-deployment characteristics of software that we could choose to devote special attention to, reliability is one we regard as primary. The domain of web services, both because the process of improving and changing ser server-side software is comparatively contained, and because managing change itself is so tightly coupled with failures of all kinds is a natural platform for which we approach might which our approach might emerge despite arising at google and in the web community more generally we think that this discipline has lessons applicable to other communities and other organizations this book is an attempt to explain how we do things both so that other organizations might make us use of what we've learned and so that we can better define the role and what the term means. To that end, we have organized the book so that general principles and more specific practices are separated where possible. And where it's appropriate to discuss a particular topic with Google-specific information, we trust that the reader will indulge us in this and will not be afraid to draw useful conclusions about their own environment. We have also provided some or Orienting material, a description of Google's production environment, and a mapping between some of our internal software and publicly available software, which should help to contextualize what we are saying and make it more directly usable. Ultimately, of course, more reliable 
oriented software and systems engineering is inherently good. However, we acknowledge that smaller organizations may be wondering how they can best use the experience represented here. Much like security, the earlier you care about reliability, the better. This implies that even though a small organization has many pressing concerns and the software choices you make may differ from those Google made, it's still worth putting lightweight reliability support in place early on because it's less costly to expand a structure later on than it is to introduce one that is not present. Management contains a number of best practices for training, communicating, communication, and meetings that we found to work well for us, many of which you should be immediately usable by your organization. But for sizes between a startup and a multinational, there probably already is someone in your organization who is doing SRE work without it necessarily being called that name or recognized as such. Another way to get started on the path to improving reliability for your organization is to formally recognize that work or to find these people and foster what they do, reward it. They are people who stand up on the cusp between one way of looking at the world and another one, like Newton, who is sometimes called not the world's first physicist, but the world's last alchemist. And taking the historical view, who then, looking back, might be the first SRE? We like to think that Margaret Hamilton, working on the Apollo program on loan from MIT, had all of the significant traits of the first SRE. In her own words, part of the culture was to learn from everyone and everything, including from that which one would least expect. A case in point was when her young daughter, Lauren, came to work with her one day. While some of the team were running mission scenarios on the hybrid simulation computer, as young children do, Lauren went exploring, and she caused a mission crash by selecting the DSKY keys in an unexpected way, alerting the team as to what would happen if the pre-launch program P01 were inadvertently selected by a real astronaut during a real mission. During real mid-course, launching P01 inadvertently on a real mission would be a major problem because it wipes out navigation data and the computer was not equipped to pilot the craft with no navigation data. With an SRE's instincts, Margaret submitted a program change request to add a special error checking code in the onboard flight software in case an astronaut should, by accident, happen to select P01 during flight. But this move was considered unnecessary by the higher ups at NASA. Of course, that would never happen. So instead of adding error checking code, Margaret updated the mission specifications document to say the equivalent, <laughs> do not select P01 during flight. Apparently the update was amusing to many on the project who have been told many times that astronauts would not make any mistakes. After all, they were trained to be perfect. Well, Margaret suggested safeguard was only considered unnecessary until the very next mission. On Apollo 8, just days after specifications update, during mid-course on the fourth day of flight with the astronauts Jim Lavelle, Williams Anders, and Frank Borman on board, Jim Lavelle selected P01 by mistake, as it happens on Christmas Day, creating much havoc for all involved. This was a critical problem, because in the absence of a workaround, no navigation meant the astronauts were never coming home. Thankfully, the documentation update had explicitly called this possibility out and was invaluable in figuring out how to upload usable data and recover the mission with not much time to spare. As Margaret says, a thorough understanding of how to operate the systems was not enough to prevent human errors, and the change request to add error detection and recovery software to the pre-launch program P01 was approved shortly afterwards. Although the Apollo 8 incident occurred decades ago, there's much in the preceding paragraphs directly relevant to engineers' lives today, and much of that will continue to be directly relevant in the future. Accordingly, for the systems you look after, for the groups you work in, or for the organizations you're building, please bear that SRE way in mind. Thoroughness and dedication, belief in the value of preparation and documentation, and an awareness of what could go wrong, coupled with the strong desire to prevent it. Welcome to our emerging profession. 
How to read this book. This book is a series of essays written by members and alumni of Google Site Reliability Engineering Organization. It's much more like conference proceedings than it is like a standard book by an author or a small number of authors. Each chapter is intended to be read as part of a coherent whole, but a good deal can be gained by reading whatever subject particularly interests you. If there are other articles that support the in or inform the text, we reference them so you can follow up accordingly. You don't need to read in any particular order, though we suggest reading those set of chapters. We're going to read cover to cover, of course, and so therefore this isn't an issue. Conventions used in this book. The following typographical conventions are used. Italics indicate new terms, URLs, email addresses, file names, and file extensions. Constant width in green is used for program listings as well as within paragraphs to refer to program elements such as variable or function names, databases, data types, environment variables, statements, and keywords. A light gray constant width bold shows commands or other text that should be typed literally by the user. Constant width italic in green shows text that should be replaced with user supplied values or by values determined by context. We have tips, notes, warnings, and using code examples. They've provided a link. They also suggest Safari Books Online and a way to contact them. There's also a section on acknowledgments for why this book is possible with that, the tireless efforts of all the authors and technical writers. I'm just going to slowly scroll through them and give them credit and say thank you so much for your hard work. Really appreciate the, the time you spent putting this book together. I look forward to reading it and I hope others enjoy going on the journey with me. This will be my first time reading it through and I am so excited to learn all about what SREs do and the stories that will be told from Google's perspective.